Adox HR50 is a high resolution copy film, but does it look any good when used for regular photos? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. In blue, we have our Tri-X. In red, the ADOX HR50. So the HR stands for high resolution. 50, it's supposed to be a 50 speed film. And we can see here we have quite a slow building toe. So probably not a lot of separation in those very low tones. And then we have very, very little in terms of mid-tone straight line before we get into this long sloping shoulder. And it shoulders fairly early. We're not getting a lot of density before we're already starting to shoulder. So it's going to be high contrast uh, and probably not the best pictorial film we could see. All right, let's 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 look at the prints, see what this looks like in reality. Here we have our Tri-X 400 and our Adox or Adox HR 50. Uh, side by side, they actually look a lot closer than I remember when I made them. So I'm going to have to admit, uh, I was expecting this to have a poorer performance when I saw the original print. But now that we have everything laid out next to each other, it's actually not too bad. It's a little underdeveloped. We can see that the white is not quite as bright as over here, uh, but 
the uh, overall performance looks pretty good. So this is a high resolution film. It's really meant for copying line drawings. So black, white, and not much in between, but clearly we are getting quite a bit in between. So overall, I think it actually turned out pretty good uh, pictorial performance. Now our spectral sensitivity is a bit wonky. Our reds and cyans came out the same, but they didn't come out the same as their respective columns. So red came out a little lighter, cyan a bit darker. Uh, I think we're going to see that in the overall print uh, t-shirt, which is cyan, did come out a little darker than over here since our whites are close. I would say this is not from underdevelopment, it's from spectral sensitivity. And then as we saw with some of our other films that are a little bit red sensitive, the tones of my face get smoother than over here where the reds in my skin come out a little bit more natural. So it has that kind of like glossy, uh, smoothed out look to the skin tones. Um, but overall, I think it, it looks pretty good. So let's get in a little bit closer and check out some of that detail and grain structure to see if it's as fine grain of performance as uh, you would expect from a high resolution 50 speed film. Oh, speaking of speed, this ended up coming out at a 32 uh, film speed instead of 50 when uh, shot with ANSI standards or ISO standards. So uh, two thirds of a stop slower than anticipated, but that's still pretty respectable. Uh, it's nothing like <laughs> saying it's 400 and actually coming out 100, which we have seen in some of our other films. Okay, let's zoom in on this. Okay, so with the close up on the first section, we can see that immediately with the background, it's a touch darker uh, from. I think just the way the film operates, but the grain is definitely smoother. So we are getting small, small grain with this as we would hope shooting this particular film here on this side. Uh, again, it's a little dark, so it's a little hard to see anything. But when we look at that background, uh, we are not seeing any real apparent grain there. Uh, we are getting really good detail on the fuzzy edge of my shoulder on the silhouette against the background, but nothing too noticeable here. Let's go to the next shoulder and see if we can get some more stuff to pick up. Okay, now we're starting to see a little bit more of what this film is capable of. So yes, we're getting sharp detail with the ribbing and the collar. Uh, we're getting nice crisp detail of the stitching down the shoulder. What we are getting in addition to that is we are able to see individual threading in the fabric here that we are not picking up with the triax. And that's because we are getting a much higher resolution, much sharper, smaller grains than the 400 speed triax. We're not even seeing this with some of our 180 speed films either. This is really picking up really, really fine detail. And that's really fantastic if you're going to do macro stuff where it's all about small detail. Uh, I don't think shooting this at, you know, large format, if it were available, I don't believe it is, but shooting this at large format and making a four time enlargement isn't really going to give you that same sort of impact as shooting a small negative like this and making it bigger where you can pick up that detail uh, and then really make it much larger. So it looks good. Uh, it just needs some really fine tuning on the development time. And I think you'll have a really excellent film here. Just very, very slow. All right, here we are, uh, on the close up of my face. So my eyes look almost completely black and it's cause I, I have blue eyes, um, which of course are going to come out a little bit more on the cyan stage. And the cyan just came out very dark relative to everything else. And then I mentioned we'd have that smoothing of the red tones of my skin. I think we're seeing that where it's kind of um, a monotonous gray tone in certain areas and not quite as te textured. But I mean, 
we have quite a few films that we've seen that look good with that slight red sensitivity. Even just regular films, the uh, Fuji Acros 2 had that same sort of look to it. And that's fine. It's not a bad look. It's just a different look. But if you really want sharp, fine detail, this film is going to do it for you. I don't know what order I'm going to release these videos out, uh, but if you're also looking at the Agfa Copex, you're going to get extreme fine detail like that too. But it has its own issues. And uh, if you watch that video, either before or after this one, you'll see what I'm talking about. Overall though, much better results than I anticipated when I ordered the film. So pleased with it. I might might play with this another time, just a little bit more. All right, that's going to do it for this week. I appreciate you watching. If you like this sort of content, uh, then help support this channel so that I can get more materials to make more videos like it. You can do that by going to my merchandise page down in the link below or my Patreon page. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.